Here is a question that we will be considering. The table below shows values for the solubility of copper 2 sulfate. As you can see, we have various temperatures in degrees Celsius, and for each temperature, we have the corresponding solubility of the copper 2 sulfate in the water. As you can see, solubility has complicated looking units, grams per 100 grams of water. Now I'm going to show you how to take this table and plot it using Microsoft Excel. Here we are in Microsoft Excel. This whole area is called a spreadsheet and each individual box has a special name, it's called a cell. So I'm going to highlight this cell on the top left, which we call A1. And I'm going to type temperature in degrees Celsius. So you can see a couple of things wrong with that. The first one is it doesn't quite fit in the box. So all we do is we move our cursor up to the top and if we move it along to the border area between A and B, you can see that it turns into this symbol. And once you have that symbol, you're just going to double click the left mouse button. And you can see that magically the cell resizes to the correct width. The second thing wrong with this is that, of course, degrees Celsius needs a superscript degrees sign. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that degrees sign and I'm going to right click. And if I go down to format cells, I'll be presented with this window and click superscript and then click OK. And as you can see, that's now fixed it. I'm going to click cell A2 and I'm going to type solubility and that has units of grams per 100 grams of water. Once again, you can see that that title doesn't quite fit into the box. So once again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top, I'm going to hover my cursor over the boundary between the A and B column, and I'm going to double click the left mouse key. Once again, it automatically resizes. I'm now going to enter the data from the question. So if you looked at the previous part of the video, I'm just entering the data that we had printed in the table. Now the important thing to remember is that a spreadsheet is only as good as the person entering the data. So once you've input your data, it's always worth just going through double checking that you've got it right. There we are. Okay. So I'm just going to do a couple of things to tidy this table up. The first thing that I'm not happy about is that these numbers here need to be centered in the middle of their little cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this cell B1 and I'm going to hold down the left mouse key and then I'm just going to drag across to cell G1. And then I'm going to drag down the way. So you can see I've now highlighted those cells. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to take my cursor up to the top and I'm going to click where it says center. And you can see all of the numbers are now centered in their cells. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a border around this table. So you can see that the cells have ghostly grey borders, but I'd like to change that with a black border which will make it nice and clear. So I'm just going to highlight my cells as before. And I'm going to go up to this symbol here. Okay, so this is the little border key. And I'm going to click this downwards arrow. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click all borders. As you can see, there's now a proper black border around all of my cells. 
So if for whatever reason I was printing this spreadsheet, that black border would show up on my printed copy. Okay, these ghostly grey borders don't show up when printed. Uh, just to make these titles look a little bit nicer, I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to add a background. So I'm going to go up to this little paint bucket and I'm going to press this downwards arrow. Now normally the backgrounds are best if they have a nice pale colour and today I'm going to pick this pale grey colour. I'm going to click it and that inserts a nice pale grey background. I'm now going to make these titles bold. So I'm going to highlight them, I'm going to go up to this B, B for bold, and I'm going to click it and that now makes those titles bold. Notice that the solubility title has got a little bit too big for its cell. So once again, in a situation like that, you just hover your mouse over at the border between the two columns, double click, and you can see the cells go to the correct width. I'm now going to show you how to turn this into a graph. So I'm going to highlight the entire table and I'm going to go up here to where it says insert. I'm going to click insert and I'm going to go and I'm going to click this button here. So you can see I've got various graphs that I could choose but in this situation we're going to pick this one which is called an XY scatter. Okay. Uh, so whenever you have a situation in science where you're drawing a line graph, X, Y scatter is the best option to choose. So I'm just going to click it. Uh, and you can see that I've got a few options. And I'm just going to start by choosing this one. So this one on the top left hand side. And I'm going to click it. And here is the first draft of our new chart. With Excel, it's very good at making an initial draft, but very often you will actually have to change it uh, in order to make it as you want. So there are a few things wrong with this. Uh, first of all, um, there should be titles on the axes. Uh, and secondly, the, the overall title isn't very clear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click the graph and I'm going to go up here uh, to where it says quick layout and I'm going to click it uh, and you can see uh, that I've got 11 options here and if I hover my mouse over each one it changes my graph between all of these options and you just go through them until you find a graph that you like. So you can see there are lots of options. There can be graphs with trend lines, graphs with grid lines, uh, graphs with data labels. And I quite like the look of this one. So I'm going to click it. There we are. Now, I'd quite like that graph to have a title, okay? So all graphs should have titles, a nice description about what's going on. So to add a title, I'm just going to go to add chart element and I'm going to go to chart title. And you can see that I've got three options, no chart title, but I would like to have one above the chart. Okay, so chart overlay would be where the title actually goes on top of the chart. It's a little bit confusing, so I think I'll go for this one. Okay, again, uh, you can see what it's going to look like just by hovering your mouse over each of the options. That's quite a nice feature of Excel. So I'm going to click above chart. Okay, so I'm going to give this a nice descriptive title and I'm going to call it
There we are. Solubility of copper 2 sulfite versus temperature. Now, just because versus comes from a Latin word, we want to put that in italics. So we just go up to the home button, go to this I, I for italic, and click it. Okay, and that's just a nice little touch there. Solubility of copper 2 sulfate versus temperature. Right, there's no need to have this um, legend. Okay, if I had two lines uh, from two different experiments on the same graph, that legend would be needed. Uh, but in this situation, I'm just going to click the legend and I'm going to press delete on my keypad. Okay, and that just removes that uh, legend. Uh, and you can see that the graph automatically resized. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the x-axis, so the horizontal axis, to say temperature. And remember, you've also got to put the units. Now, once again, uh, this unit, degrees Celsius, that degree sign needs to be superscript. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click the degree sign once it's been highlighted, and I'm going to go down to where it says font. And I'm going to click font. And I would like that to be superscript. Click OK. And there you are. That axis title is now correct. So on the vertical axis, the Y axis, again, I'm just going to highlight that. And I'm going to type... And that's just the unit that we had in our original table. And we've now created the graph in Microsoft Excel. So we've answered the question, we've taken the data uh, from the original page, and we've used Microsoft Excel to create the graph. Now, having done this, there could be various things that you want to do, uh, depending on what you're using the graph for. Okay. Uh, you might decide that you want a slightly different type of graph. Okay, You might decide that you want to add a trend line. You might decide that you want to print out a full page copy of your graph for a report, for example. So I'm going to show you how to do this now. Here is the graph that we produced in the previous part of the video. I'm going to show you how to add a trend line. You would select the graph and you would go up to the top where it says chart design and you would left click. You would then move to the left hand side to where it says add chart element and click it. And you can see we've got various options. And if you go down, we have something called trend line. Now, once again, we've got various options. And the nice feature about Excel is if you hover over each option, you have a preview of how the graph will appear. So with no trend line, it looks like that. With a straight line of best fit, it would look like that. With an exponential line of best fit. A linear forecast, which is a more complicated type of line of best fit. And a moving average, which is, an, which is also quite a complicated line of best fit. So in this sort of situation, I think it's quite clear that the data isn't linear. The data is more of a curve. And I think the exponential line of best fit would be more appropriate in this situation. OK, so if we click that, that is how we would add the line of best fit. Now, if I changed my mind, I wanted to remove the line of best fit. I just make sure that my graph is selected. I would go to the same place. Go down to trend line and I would select none and click it. What would happen if I wanted to change this chart to a slightly different type of chart? Well, again, I would select the chart and this time I would right click it. And if I go down to where it says change chart type and left click, you can see that I have access 
to a whole range of different charts. Now, most of these are inappropriate for the type of experiment that we're showing. Um, but the nice feature is that you can get a preview um, of each of these uh, before selecting. Okay, so for example, this is what we've got at the moment. Uh, what if I wanted to add uh, lines between those points? Well, I can add nice curved lines that gives me a nice smooth plot. That looks quite nice. That would be quite appropriate for this experiment. How about if I wanted to add straight lines between the plot? Well, there's an option for that too. If I click here, that gives me straight lines. So different circumstances might demand that. Uh, I might decide that I don't want to see the data points. So again, we have the choice between a nice smooth line or a straight line between each of my invisible data points. Okay, now for this experiment, I think probably most appropriate is to have this option. So I'm just going to click OK with a nice smooth exponential trend line. I think that would be the most appropriate to choose in this situation. Now, what if I wanted to include this graph in a report? Well, I would want this graph to be on a full page, not part of a spreadsheet. So what I would do is I would select my chart, I would right click, and I would go down to where it says move chart and left click it. And I'll be presented with two options. At the moment, this is an object in the current spreadsheet, which is called sheet two. But I want this to be in a sheet of its own called chart one. And I'm going to click OK. And now you can see it's moved my chart into uh, a different page called chart two. So I can return to my original data by going to sheet two. And you can see I've got my original data here. And here I have my chart. Hopefully you will have found this video to be a useful introduction to drawing simple graphs using Microsoft Excel. Excel is a very powerful program. You can do a whole range of things. And I recommend starting with a simple project like this. And from there, you can experiment. And with experience, you can go on to produce more complicated graphs.